Good morning, everybody, or maybe it's afternoon or evening for you and our um, far off international teams. But um, hello again, and I am um, so excited that I get to welcome you back to part two of Team Facilitator Training. I'm Kim Seal, I'm the Executive Director of Grades of Green. And, you know, let me just start by saying on behalf of the whole team of Grades of Green, it has just been such an inspiration um, to work with you and to see what your teams are doing. I get so excited when I get to um, each week review what all the amazing things you guys are up to. Um, you know, and especially with the constraints and all the stresses of this pandemic, um, it's been extraordinary. You guys have shown passion and brains, ingenuity, and so much humor. I just can't get enough of all your um, slogans and your um, logos. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so thanks again for going above and beyond to give them, your students, and us the opportunity to take action on climate crisis. Here's Anjali, and she's going to introduce the team. Great. Thank you so much, Kim. So hi, everybody. I'm Anjali Kaintop. I'm the program manager here at Grades of Green, and I'm going to let the rest of our team introduce themselves as well. Make sure to unmute team. Hi, I'm Kathy, and I'm one of the program advisors. I'm Robin Murphy. I'm also a program advisor. I'm Sarah Sedeka, a program advisor. Hi, everyone. I'm Ava Blanchett, and I am also a program advisor. Hi, everyone. I am Malcolm, and I am, I promise you, the last of the program advisors. And my name is James Saracini, um, and I'm the marketing and communications director for Grades of Green. Uh, we'll be taking you through the training materials today. So here are a few pointers for the training. Currently, everyone is muted except for the speaker. Um, so please also keep your camera off for the duration of the presentation as well. If you have any questions as we go through the training, uh, please type them into the chat and we will stop periodically to address them. We will also be recording this uh, meeting so you can review this material later. And we will send a follow-up email documenting questions and answers as well and include that recording. Back to you, Anjali. Right. Thanks so much, James. And I wanted to just go over our agenda today and how um, the training will be broken down today. So first we did our welcome and introduce our team. I also just want to reiterate um, Kim's thank you to everybody and just welcome everyone who's joined us um, from here where we are all over California, also all over the US and other parts of the globe such as India, Cameroon, Kenya. I apologize if I missed anybody. Um, but we're so appreciative to have so many people from different corners of the world uh, join us. So next we'll go over the objectives and the stipend requirements uh, for the facilitator stipend. Um, then we're gonna do an overview of phase three. This is something we went over in the first facilitator training, but we've made some changes. So we just wanna give a refresher and update to that. We'll take a short break as well as take some questions um, about phase three. After that, we'll go over phases four, four and five, share some helpful tips from our teams, and then do another question and answer session. So we should be out of here no later than um, like 11.30, or 11.30 our time, <laughs> about an hour and a half, wherever you are. All right, and today our, our training objectives for today, we're gonna, like I said, go over the facilitator stipend requirements, the Climate Solutions Campaign Goals, the Eco Grant Eligibility Requirements, the Timeline for your campaign, and the key activities that we're looking at in phases three through five. If you're a new, a new team just joining us today, have no fear. We can send you the recording of the first training and your advisor can walk you through phases one and two. We're also gonna do a quick review of phase three today, like I said, um, because we've streamlined those materials a lot since the first training. Lastly, another note to new teams, be sure to have all your students complete the consent and permission form. We'll put the link in the, to the form in the chat right now, but it can also be found on the Get Ready page of our guidebook. We urge any teams who have members who haven't submitted the form yet to ask them again to submit. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Robin to take us through some campaign goals. Thanks, Anjali. 
So our goals for your team during this Climate Solutions Campaign are ultimately, we want your team to gain climate, climate science knowledge, understand local climate change impacts, practice their project management skills, show their environmental impact to their community, understand environmental justice and equality, and learn and practice leadership skills. Kathy will now explain how you amazing facilitators will be eligible to earn your stipend. So as many of you know, for the first time in Grades of Greens history, we are offering a stipend for your you amazing facilitators. And here are the requirements to receive the $500 facilitator stipend. Um, first, you have to complete both the facilitator trainings, both facilitator trainings and both evaluation forms. So that was the training that happened in September and today's training. Second, you need to ensure that your team completes the campaign and submits all the required material that, are, that is in the guidebook. Um, third, you'll participate in a one hour focus group in May at the conclusion of the program. And then in June, you receive your $500 check. Um, and then just there's a reminder that while you may have multiple facilitators that are working with your team, there's just one stipend per team. Okay, so now we are going to uh, take you over to Sarah, who's going to give you a quick refresher on the campaign timeline. Thanks, Kathy. So as we mentioned before, teams should feel free to move through the campaign at their own pace. But many of you have asked for an approximate idea of how long each phase should last. You can see that on the Get Ready page of the guidebook, and we'll put the proposed dates in the chat now. Again, a reminder that there is flexibility for your teams with a hard deadline for the campaign in May. Here's the general timeline. Phase one, learn, is five weeks. Phase two, pick your project, is three weeks. Phase three, create a plan, is nine weeks. The mid-year student webinar is Saturday, February 6th. Phase four, take action, is eight weeks. Phase five, share your success, is four weeks. And the post campaign is three weeks. If you've just started the campaign or are feeling behind, it is not too late. Um, please contact your advisor to help you streamline your project. Um, we'll be giving tips at the end of, the web of this webinar as well. And keep in mind that last year we did two semester long campaigns and this year you have the whole year to complete your campaign. So there's plenty of time for teams just starting out. At this point, I'm going to turn the training back over to Ava who is going to take you through a quick review of eco grants and project maps. Great, thank you, Sarah. All right, hi everyone, um, Ava here again. Here to remind you that the Climate Solutions Campaign is organized as a contest. So teams that submit all of the required phase Google Forms will be eligible to have the materials reviewed by a panel of outside environmental experts to receive eco grants of up to $1,000 so that they can continue their work past this campaign. It's very exciting. Um, and while not all teams will win one, uh, to learn how your team can earn the maximum points towards an eco grant, you can click on the link in the get ready phase. We are also putting the link in the chat now. Um, and please remember that there are also plenty of bonus points to be earned along the way. So it's a good idea to keep your eye out for those opportunities. All right, moving on to project maps. All right, so if you haven't yet received your team's project map, please contact your advisor. We have them all made and ready to go and they're a great resource to have on hand. So you may have noticed that some of the forms that you have filled out have this map emoji next to it, next to some of the questions. Um, and this means that this is a question in the campaign that's a really key question. And we've programmed it in such a way that when you answer a question, it will auto-populate on this Google form, which is your project map. Um, and here you'll find important information such as your vision statement, your topic, your key messaging, and more. So as you continue through the campaign, your key answers will automatically uh, be added to the project map. And it's a really neat way just to have a visual of your progress. So definitely get in touch with your program advisors if you don't have that yet. Um, so yeah, if your team wants to edit this, we suggest making a copy of it and then keeping it in your own Google Drive and then just doing it manually through that. Um, so yeah, just to reiterate, this is a really great great resource. And if you don't have it yet, um, get in touch with your people and we'll get that to you. Uh, now over to Malcolm to cover phase three. All right. Thanks, Ava. Okay. So before we get started on phase three, we want to find out a little more about you awesome facilitators. So Katie is going to put this uh, link in the chat. Please click on it. And we're going to do a quick activity. 
So first thing we want to find out is where you're from. So what you can do is you can click on, the, click on the link in the chat, which will take you to a separate browser, and then click where on the map you're from, and then you can come back to um, our Zoom presentation, and you can see where all you awesome facilitators are from. All right, so I'm seeing some West Coast, seeing some Midwest here. Where else are we from? Lots of West Coast, this is awesome. All right, there's, there's my East Coast peeps. Keep clicking on the map where you're from. Thank you, everyone. All right, so we have some shout outs in the chat as well. Uh, we have somebody from India, very awesome. We have Vincent from Kenya. Thank you, Vincent, for participating today. I'm gonna give you guys 10 more seconds to, to, to click on the map and then we're gonna move on to the next question. All right, thank you, everyone. All right, so next question. You should be able to fill this out on the same browser. Oh, we also have um, a team from Cameroon. Thank you for joining us. So what age are the students that you work with? So we have a couple options here. We have elementary school, middle school, high school. And if you work with um, you know, a mixed group of students, um, whether they're a little younger or a little older, there's also an option for you there. All right, looks like middle school, ages 12 through 14. Um, the majority of you guys, which, you know, honestly are the golden years. I, I do remember that time in my life and I, I really did enjoy it. So yeah, thank you for filling this out. I'm going to give you guys a couple more seconds to fill this out. Um, and what I want you guys to see is that, you know, we do have teams, you know, like, like you saw from all over the world, first of all, and we also have teams that um, are so different in ages, but, you know, we appreciate all you facilitators um, for going through our training and, you know, supporting your students, which is the most important thing to us. All right, five more seconds to fill out this question. Awesome, thanks everyone. Okay, last question for the day here. What is your team's topic? What is your team's topic? And a reminder again, the topics are waste, transportation, energy, food, and trees. All right, so let's see. We got trees on the board. We have waste on the board, very awesome. All right, in the chat, um, Ungawa Jr. says waste, thank you. What else do we have? Okay, so each we have, we have some schools that, uh, some awesome facilitators who have multiple teams who are doing um, each of the topics, so thank you. All right, so I see waste. I see one cars, which falls under transportation, very awesome. All right, more waste, some food, transportation, energy, very cool. All right, yeah, I'm seeing some, some teams that are doing multiple topics, which, which I think is awesome too. I'm gonna take a look at the chat really quick. We have uh, trees, food, trees, food, awesome. Yeah, thank you everyone. Okay, cool. So bringing us back to our presentation, we're now gonna cover phase three of the Climate Solutions Campaign. So during phase three, um, this is kind of our little infographic, <laughs> um, some of your teams are currently working on phase three, some of your teams are yet to get there, um, you know, and we're excited for you guys to continue through um, our phases, but during phase three, um, you and your teams will, one, choose a target audience. You're then going to develop key messages for that target audience, um, and then you're going to set effective goals, which we'll go over in a little bit here. You're also going to identify the different communications platforms that you're going to use. Um, and then finally, you're going to finalize and use a task list. Okay, so getting started with phase three. Um, in phase 3.1, um, you'll choose a target audience based on the type of campaign that you chose to do in phase two. And so the key to choosing a target audience is to get specific based on your project. So for example, um, if your team is a group of sixth graders aiming for their peers to adopt a meatless Mondays at your school, your primary target audience is going to be, yes, you guessed it, your sixth grade class, because uh, they're the ones that you're trying to convince or persuade. However, um, you can also have the parents of your sixth graders as a secondary target audience, um, because they're the ones who are preparing the meals and are supporting their sixth graders. Um, and so, yes, it is okay to have more than one target audience. Um, and so honing in on a target audience will great you help, greatly help you in the next phase of the campaign, which is writing key messages. So during 
phase 3.2 of the campaign, um, your team will write key messages that you want to convey to your target audience. So keep in mind that your key messages will be different based on who your target audience is. So going back to our example of sixth graders, so um, you'll want to tailor your key messages to the rest of the sixth grade class. So something that sixth graders will easily understand and absorb, you know, that can be a multitude of different things, whether it's YouTube videos or um, memes or, you know, something that the sixth graders will really grasp and hold on to. However, when you're writing your key messages for your secondary audience, the parents of the sixth grade class, you'll probably want to stray away from the memes, um, but you'll want to adapt your key messages to best communicate with those parents. And so in our guidebook, we guide you through exactly how to write key messages and we break it down into three parts. So we want key messages to be first a description of the problem in an in attention getting man manner. Um, next, we want a description of why the problem is important to your specific target audience. Um, and then lastly, a call to action as it relates to that target audience. So, you know, keep in mind, again, the example of the sixth graders, um, as well as their parents. So next, moving on to phase 3.3. So now that your team has written your key messages, um, you're going to need a means to communicate those key messages to your target audience. So, that, so that's where the communication platforms comes in. So you're going to, we're going to want to find the communication platform that best fits your audience and the situation. And it's super important to effectively con convey the key messages that you work so hard to develop. So as you can see here, we offer a multitude of different communication platforms um, to choose from. However, similar to the rest um, of our campaign, if you feel that your team wants to use something that's not on our list, um, we encourage you know, thinking inside the box, just let your facilitator know um, what communication platform you want to use. And so on our website, um, you'll be able to find more information about each communication platform. Um, just simply click the drop down here, um, as you can see, and we give a lot of resources and, and how to properly use these different communication platforms. Um, and yeah, so similar to both key messages and target audiences, your team um, is more than free to choose more than one communication platform um, that you want to communicate your messages through. All right, next, phase 3.4. So phase 3.4 of our campaign may be the most confusing, but may also be the most important. So I really want to highlight this in detail here. So all our teams that go through our campaign will have project goals and that they'll determine for themselves. And so we define these as effective goals, effective goals, as you can see here. And so we encourage teams to hone in on writing effective goals as opposed to generic open-ended goals. So it's, let's take a minute here to read these two examples um, on the screen um, and then type in the chat the number of the goal that you guys think is the most effective. So which of these two goals here, one or two, is most effective? And then type your answer in the chat. All right, I'm seeing a lot of twos. I'm seeing a lot of twos, awesome. Yeah, you guys are just about as smart as your students. Um, you're definitely correct. Um, goal number two is more effective. So I'm gonna read it out really quick. So goal number two says, we want to reduce 1.5 tons of carbon dioxide emissions in the drive-through line at the fast food restaurant on the corner of Pine and First Ave by conducting a public education and action campaign targeting customers every Friday afternoon in April. All right. So yeah, like I said, most of you guys got option number two correct. Um, it definitely is the more effective goal. And so at Grades of Green, we break it down into four points. So we want our effective goals to first be well-defined, second, be measurable and include the impact your project aims to reduce or prevent. We want your goals to be time-bound um, with a set starting and end date. And we also want um, you guys to list specific actions um, taken to ensure success. All right, so effective goals. The second part of phase 3.4 is kind of where it gets a little confusing. So please type your questions in the chat um, if you have any questions. So I mentioned previously that every team that goes through our campaign faces different challenges and situations based on your school, your community, and, and where you're located geographically. So in the same way, um, the projects that you work on will be drastically different. So when you're writing an effective goal, there could be an opportunity for your team to include what's called a greenhouse gas target. So I'm gonna say that again, there is an opportunity for your team to include a greenhouse gas target within your effective goal. 
So some, in some projects, you'll be able to calculate a specific number or quantity of greenhouse gas that can, can be prevented or reduced. And th so this can sometimes be tricky to, to determine, um, but you know, as you can see on the screen here, we highlight examples of both. So sometimes when a project is centered around education, ed educating people or promoting awareness, um, teams will not be able to have a quantifiable greenhouse gas target with your effective goal. So let's take a look at this example now. So we'll say this is team A. So team A's effective goal right here. Um, their effective goal is we want to educate 75% of our school's community on the harms of single use plastic and how to avoid them by conducting a public education and action campaign by holding three Zoom webinars in the month of March that teach students how to avoid and upcycle plastic. So this is team A's effective goal. So since team A is focusing on educating their school and their community, um, it's extremely difficult to reach a tangible number that represents an amount of greenhouse gas that um, is being reduced or prevented. Thus, they won't have a greenhouse gas target. However, they still do have a very, very awesome effective goal. So rather, um, in phases four and five, um, we're going to measure their impact by the number of people that they reached or persuaded. So on the other hand, um, in some cases, teams may be working very intentionally to reduce um, an item, practice, or habit, um, and there will be a way to translate that into a tangible um, greenhouse gas target. So let's take a look at team B, this second example here. So team B's effective goal, which includes a greenhouse gas target is, we want to reduce 1.5 tons of carbon dioxide emissions, so that's the greenhouse gas target, from idling cars in the drive through line at the fast food restaurant on the corner of Pine and First by conducting a public education and action campaign targeting customers every Friday afternoon during the month of April. Okay, so team B. So team B is actually able to calculate the time that a car idles in this drive through um, and multiplying it by the amount of greenhouse gas that is emitted by this car. So by campaigning and doing their project to prevent this, they're able to use an equation to find the specific tangible amount of carbon dioxide saved or prevented. So thus they have a greenhouse gas target. So I'll say it again, team B down here has an effective goal with a greenhouse gas target. So you're asking me, Malcolm, what do the, both of these teams have in common? They both have an effective goal. So as you can see here, they both have very, very awesome effective goals as all our teams will have during the campaign. It's super important to remember that both of these are okay. There's no extra or bonus point for writing one or the other um, for having or not having a greenhouse gas target. It's just the nature um, that you know, different teams have different projects and sometimes you will be able to have a greenhouse gas target and sometimes you will not be able to have a greenhouse gas target. But the bottom line is all our teams will write effective goals. So I know this can be kind of confusing. So um, please, please contact your advisor if you are confused on this manner still. Alrighty, lastly, um, the last phase of phase, the last sub phase of phase three is phase 3.5 where, where your teams um, will organize their thoughts and actions by creating a task list. So this will help organize deadlines and assign tasks to different team members. Um, this part of the phase three is pretty straightforward. So your task list, as you can see on the screen here, will include a few things. First thing is the task. And we you know, suggest that you do this um, as detailed as possible. Um, secondly, the person doing it. So as you can see here, task one is being done by Kathy. I'm sure her fan club in the chat will absolutely love that. Um, and then lastly, it will include a target deadline or completion date. Okay, so it's important to note um, that you, your task list will automatically go onto <laughs> your project map so that you can track it. So like Ava mentioned before, we suggest that you make a copy of this project map so you're able to edit it and maybe check off some tasks. Um, if you are unsure how to do so, please contact your advisor and we will help you out. Uh, we can even make, uh, make a copy for you. So it's important to note that sometimes um, some of your teams, when you get to phase 3.5, you may have already started your project and completed a few tasks. So you're still able to put this on your, when you fill out the form on your task list and you can just put dates in the past uh, because you've already completed them. And we definitely want you guys to um, you know, track what, you, what you're going to do as well as what you've done in the past. Okay, so phase three. So, uh, before we go into phase four and five, we want to give you a chance to ask us any questions that you have about the campaign, about today's training, um, or, you know, anything in general. 
So we're going to pause here for about three minutes. Um, please use this time to type questions in the chat or concerns that you've had so far. Um, we're going to get around to answering them. Um, if you don't have any questions, you can take these three minutes to, you know, grab a cup of coffee, use the restroom, um, check your messages, you know, do a stretch break. Um, and we're going to address these questions a little bit later on. So I'm going to start the three minute timer here and we will see you guys um, in a bit. So please type those questions in the chat. All right, welcome back everybody from the break. We got some really good questions in our chat. Thank you so much. So we'll just address um, a few of them now before we move on. Um, thanks, Pam. I know Ava answered your question in the chat. So um, Pam said, hi, Pam, by the way, said, is there a way to calculate greenhouse gases or CO2 diversion that the kids can do? So our team's gonna work with you um, to create a, um, a a formula so that the kids can help calculate it. So we'll we'll work on that. We're not um, expecting you guys to come up with all those formulas. So we'll definitely um, help you out with that. Just work with your advisor and our team will come up with that. Um, Tim, hi Tim. So Pam and Tim, both of our, two of our all-star teachers, I'm gonna embarrass them. They both have um, won past awards of our best teacher award. So thank you guys for joining us and being longtime participants in grades of green programs. Um, yep, Tim, we'll get you um, all adjusted um, to the to catch up um, to complete your campaign. Um, it's definitely not a problem starting out now. You're not the only one. We've got a lot of teams that um, have joined in January that will be doing a semester long campaign. So no problem there. We'll work with you on your timeline. Um, the task list. I Malcolm, do you want to take that one? Yeah, great question, Pam. Um, 
So at, actually at the bottom of the project maps that we'll send you guys, there should be um, all the tasks that you have there. So again, um, they're on the bottom of your project map. So you can create a copy and the kids can edit it um, by themselves. And if that is too confusing, we can also make a separate document. So um, we can work together with, with you and Kathy as well to, to figure that out. Yep, and um, thank you, Tahira. Um, and I know Robin um, is your advisor and addressed your question in the chat as well, but just to anyone else who is um, working on putting an effective goal together, we're here, your advisors are here to help you put those together. So if you need more examples or um, just honing in on what your effective goal is for your specific project, we're here to help you with that. So don't worry about it, we've got you covered there. Um, Vincent, let's see. Is there a way to calculate CO2 reduction through tree planting? So again, we're going to go through your advisors. It's a super specific question. So okay, I think Kathy or Malcolm is working with Vincent. I don't remember which one, but we'll definitely work directly with your team to help that out. So keep the questions coming, please. We'll, um, we'll answer them again. There'll be another ch chance to kind of put all those in the chat, or if you want to do them as we're going, um, feel free to. We'll address them at the end of the presentation. So at this time, I am excited to turn it over to what seems to be the fan favorite for program advisor. Um, I've got a different fan favorite, but Kathy knows that. <laughs> so we're gonna turn it over to Kathy um, to talk about phase four. Thanks everyone. Okay, hi. So we're, now we're on to phase four. Um, and this is the action phase. This is where teams officially start to do their projects. Don't worry if your team has already begun taking action before they reach this phase in the guidebook, that is totally fine. Um, this section of the guidebook is just gonna give them some tools that are gonna help them keep track of their work. And the phase also kicks off with a mid-year webinar where they're gonna share their project ideas with their peers around the world. And that webinar is actually gonna be held next Saturday, the student webinar at February 6th from 10 to 11 Pacific Standard Time. And... Um, students can register for that webinar using the link that we're going to put in the chat now, or they can just complete the um, 4.1 Google form that's in the guidebook that you see on the slide right here. They can also register using that Google form. Um, during the webinar, teams are going to get to share their projects, um, their project idea through a short 30 second video. So be sure to have your teams film and send their 30 second video to their advisor by Monday, end of day Monday. Um, that's February 1st. And their video can just be a recording they make on Zoom. It's very informal. They should include where they're from, um, what school they attend, their team name if they have one, because the team names have been hilarious. So please include those team names and the, the solution they're working on. And we have a couple of sample videos that I've already wanted to show you now in case your team hasn't yet made their 30 second video. You can see an example of some videos that other students have made that might give you an idea to help your students along. Hello, we are Steam Express from Bardina High School, California. Did you know 84% of donated clothes end up in landfills? Our project for the Climate Solutions Campaign is waste, and the solution for our project is upcycling. We aim to solve this issue by upcycling used clothing and fabrics into blankets we can give to homeless shelters. Thank you. Hello. All right, here's our second example. Hello guys, I'm Ken Joe Jr. I'm Awunja Awunja Jr. And we, we are the Prince of Green. Green. The project we are working on is called composting. And composting is like the best method we are trying to implement in our institution to reduce waste. Our institution is notorious for the burning of papers and plastic waste as a means of managing the waste on campus. With composting, we are here to make Goya a better place and make sustainability a goal. Thank you. Hello, guys. So that gives you an idea of what your videos can be like. Um, thank you for those who have come in already. Um, we really urge your kids to attend this webinar live if they can, but we understand it's on a Saturday um, and it might not 
uh, be in your time zone. Um, so we were, are gonna have a recording of it that your students can watch afterwards, but if they can attend live, it will be fabulous. Okay, so on to phase 4.2. Um, this is all about documentation. Um, the guidebook goes over how teams should document their work, but it's really important to us at Grades of Green that the teams in the campaign practice good record keeping. It's really only by keeping good records that they can measure the impact of their work. And making a measurable impact is the real point of taking action. So we've created some worksheets that they can use to help them record the actions they take. Like you can see the list here, they can, the worksheets will help them um, record their posting on social media or the posting they make on websites or how many emails they send out or making presentations. Um, so Sarah is gonna share one of those worksheets, the worksheet that goes with social media. Um, so you can get an idea of how your students can use them to keep track of their work as they go. So this is the worksheet to help teams keep track of their social media posts. Teams can indicate the number of social media posts they made and the platforms they use. They can also estimate the number of audience members their posts reach. There are instructions at the top of this page to help them make this estimation. And there is a worksheet of this type for each one of the communication platforms the teams could choose from in phase three. Because of the limitations the pandemic has placed on in-person events and gatherings, most teams are working on public education campaigns this year. There are a few teams, however, that are working on projects that will result in measurable greenhouse gas emissions reductions. If your team has a project that will reduce or prevent measurable greenhouse gas emissions during this campaign, we have a chart they can use to record these actions too. Teams can use the measurable greenhouse gas tracking chart to identify when they collected greenhouse gas data and what type of data was being collected. In the first example shown, a team measured the amount of food waste their project diverted from the landfill on January 5th. The next example shows how a team measured the number of cars idling on February 2nd. The last example shows the number of trees planted on March 3rd. Each of these actions will result in a measurable greenhouse gas impact. Your team advisor can provide your team with an equation that will allow them to calculate their emissions reductions using the data from this worksheet. And note that as mentioned, not all teams will need to use the measurable greenhouse gas tracking chart. So please reach out to your advisor if you're not sure if your team will need to keep track of its actions using this chart as well as the others. Now here's Robin who will go over phase five and we will have another Q&A session at the end. Thanks, Sarah. So I'm going to walk you through phase five, your fifth and final phase of the campaign. Um, this is the fun part of the campaign where you get to share your success um, and talk about all the great things that you've done. So in phase 5.1, teams will calculate and report the impacts that their cam campaign projects have. So first teams will look at the worksheets used in phase four to keep track of their communication platforms. Then together with your advisor, um, the teams will calculate the total number of people that they've reached. In phase 5.2, you get to share your success. So this is where you really get to show off. In this final phase, teams will share examples of all the outreach materials that they've created during their campaign and kept track of. So these are things like screenshots of social media posts, um, cop copies of any emails sent, links to websites that either they created or posted on, um, press releases they created, articles that were written about them, petitions created, copies of flyers, posters, and signs that they've hung. Um, all of these things they'll want to share with their advisor. They'll also write a description of their project, telling all about how they achieved their results and sharing what they're most proud of and how they would use any eco-grant funds to increase their impact if their project is selected. Then between April 23rd and May 14th, it's time for your teams to finish up any last minute work and submissions. After May 14th, Grades of Green will ask teams and facilitators to complete a final evaluation survey and will conduct, conduct a facilitator focus group. 
And that's when the Eco Grant winners will be announced. May 14th is the last day to submit any campaign documents, forms, and materials. So everything needs to be in and submitted to your advisor at that point. Um, Kathy is now going to give us some tips and tricks on how to navigate the campaign. Okay, so we have several teams who are just starting the program now, and I'm sure we've got a few teams who want to move a little bit more quickly this semester. So we've put together a few tips to help streamline the program. And here's tip one, um, make a shared document that contains all the questions from the guidebook so that members of your team have a place where they can work together before they submit any Google Forms. And to help with this, we've made a Word document that contains just the questions that are from the guidebook. And we're gonna send that doc document to you with, any, with all the follow-up materials from today's training. So you're gonna get that document and make it easier for you. The second tip is to um, skim through the materials in each phase before your team does, and then give them a quick summary of the topics and the questions um, before they dive into it themselves. Um, and if you actually have a team that works pretty independently from you, you could recommend that the members themselves take turns skimming through the materials prior to the meeting and then providing an overview to the team before they start. Uh, the third tip is have the team review the questions in the Google form at the end of the phase before they read through the materials. That way, when they're actually going through the guidebook, they'll um, know what questions they're going to have to answer and be looking for those that content as they go through. The fourth tip, and I think this is a really good one, is if your team gets bogged down on any questions as they're going along in a phase, reach out to your advisor immediately and then feel free to skip ahead to the next phase. Your advisor will get back into contact with you and they're gonna help you work through that. Um, and then anything that's confusing and then your students can go back afterwards and submit those uh, phases they were having trouble with later. It is completely okay for the students to submit things out of order. As long as they all come in by May 14th, they can do it in the most logical fashion that works for them. And then tip five, is um, have the team keep a countdown starting now of the weeks to the completion of the campaign. So final submissions are due on May 14th. So currently there are about 15 weeks left in the campaign, um, give or take a few weeks, depending on whether or not you have a winter and a spring break. Um, and a countdown will help keep things real and give the teams a little bit of a sense of urgency and a destination. Um, so now I'm gonna pass you, having given you a few, few tips of the trade, I'm gonna pass you on to Malcolm and he's gonna tell you a little bit about today's evaluation form. Thanks, Kathy. We see why you are definitely a fan favorite. Um, we're definitely also gonna send all these tips and tri tricks in a follow-up email, um, along with some questions that you guys asked, um, you know, in case you missed it or couldn't write it down. So moving on, um, we are so fortunate. Uh, we have a partnership with uh, a UCLA group called Net Impact, which are a group of undergraduates who are um, helping us with our programming and making it more um, effective and impactful. So not only do they go to um, the best university in Los Angeles, um, but they are helping us make an impact. Um, and as you guys know, um, here at Grades of Green, we're constantly striving to make improvements to our programming, um, you know, to ultimately benefit you and your students. And so um, right now we're going to put a link in the chat to a facilitator survey. So those of you who were here for our first facilitator training, you remember that there was a survey to fill out. And so this is um, that one as well. And so we have a couple extra questions about our uh, programming, about our website, and we would greatly appreciate if you could help us out with that. This will be, um, this will help you out and this will make you eligible for um, that facilitator stipend that we talked about. And so if there's one link that you click on in the chat today, please click on this one. Uh, we greatly appreciate your help and your feedback and your feedback, you know, is, is what, you know, helps us out and, and helps us improve our programming. So if the link is coming in the chat right now, I will put it in. So you guys could take a look at this, um, you know, best to do it right after the training so that everything is fresh in your mind. So now I'm going to pass it back over to Anjali to bring us to the end of our training. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes. If you can click on that link, start filling out those surveys, make sure you have it open in another window. Um, so Malcolm has shared that link right in the in the chat. Click that click on that before we close our presentation so you can get to it. Um, and we're gonna look over our Q&A. So that concludes um, the presentation form. 
portion of the team facilitator training. So we can answer some questions. Keep putting your questions in the chat. Um, if you don't submit a question, you can complete the form. Um, if you're not, excuse me, you can complete that form that we were talking about that's in the chat and that will record the attendance um, of your end of the year uh, stipend. So make sure to take care of that today. Um, we'll also be sending out a follow-up recording of the program, the links from this chat and an FAQ sheet for those of you that are unable to stay for the question and answer period. So in any of the questions that we already um, addressed, we will also include in that, in that follow-up email. So we're really looking forward to seeing your students next Saturday. Teams will be able to meet each other and learn about all the projects from around the world. It's gonna be a super fun event. We'll be exploring environmental justice and how it affects each topic that your students are focusing on. Um, we're super excited. Um, Ava, who you've heard from today, who also um, is, she is currently attending UCLA. And Malcolm, if you couldn't tell, is a graduate from UCLA. <laughs> She'll be giving a wonderful presentation um, on environmental justice and how it affects each topic that your students are working on. We're also gonna have um, a wonderful presentation from an environment, a young environmentalist who can talk about actual campaign projects that she's kind of done in the real world um, as an adult, as a young adult, and how they kind of relate to these projects and really provide some motivation for the students. So we're super excited about that. And um, I also, um, aside from thanking you all, I just really want to take thank the Grades of Green team. Um, regardless of what school you attended or maybe attending. <laughs> We've got people from all over. We're so blessed to have just such a wonderful team. Um, I know there's a lot of love out there for Kathy and Robin who have been with Grades of Green for so long, but we're also in extremely lucky for all of our program advisors. Um, our younger advisors really give us veterans a run for our money. Um, Malcolm, Ava, Sarah, you guys are just beyond wonderful. You, um, you know, behind the scenes, everyone doesn't know how much we come to you for help. Um, so anyone who's working with them, you guys are so lucky. Um, you better believe that Kathy's going to them for help. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. We all work together as a team. Um, whether you're working with directly with one of us, you really are working with all of us. And, and we're, we're so happy to, to have that for all the teams. Um, so thank you again to everyone for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and look in the chat um, to see what questions we have. Um, so the, so specifically make sure that the students RSVP for, um, next Saturday, like Kathy said, as many, um, teams that, as many students that can join live, we would love it. We're going to be sharing those student videos. Students can, you know, hear from one another around the world, which is really fun. Um, if not, we will have a recording. Um, as far as the students that have RSVP, we can send out that list next week. So we'll make sure that you know which of your students um, have attend, um, have RSVP'd. If you wanna send a quick email to your advisor, just with the, that question, they know that, that to get back to you right away to let you know um, who sent that. Um, yeah, Lucas, we'll send all the links um, that we have included in the chat. I'll include in a follow-up email. So don't worry about um, if you didn't get any of the links that are in the chat, don't worry about it. I know there were a lot. We're going to include those in a follow-up email. So you will have access to all of those. Um, thanks, Pam. Great question. Do you want facilitators to RSVP for Saturday? Yeah, we would love that. Um, just to know if you're going to be on, that would be that would be wonderful. Just let us know. We'll know that you're a facilitator, not a student um, joining us. So we'd appreciate um, facilitators to be on as well. Thank you. Um, let's see. Let me scroll through. Real quickly, I'm going to put um, the link to the post-training survey in the chat one more time, just in case you missed it. Um, here it is. Thank you, Malcolm. And so again, that, that training survey, the post-training survey is um, what are the requirements for the stipend? So <laughs> I know that's important. Um, so Carrie, I love it. <laughs> Kathy can move mountains, but probably not a principal. So I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know if she can make your principal move faster, <laughs> if only. Um, oh, that's wonderful. Shout out for Malcolm. Thank you, Vincent. It's been helpful with the timeline reminder and guidance. It's great. Um, 
All right. <laughs> James is going to help you out, Carrie. So I didn't give, and thank you, James. I didn't give a, I need to give a super special um, shout out also to James and Katie, um, our communications and marketing team. They're amazing. Um, Katie, who attends USC, um, is awesome. We love her so much. And James, we love you too. You guys are both just so great. Um, they really are so wonderful at communicating out to the world what your teams are doing, highlighting your students, um, just being super helpful, getting local communication out to people, um, spreading the word. So we really, we really do work as a team and we really appreciate all the projects that you're doing. We know about all of them. So we're we're excited um, to be working with all of you and thanks to, to James and Katie. So, and yeah, so phase three has really, um, James and Katie have really been huge in putting together phase three, a lot of the communication aspects and key messaging and things like that. So you absolutely can reach out directly um, to our communications team or have your advisor connect um, you directly with James or Katie. They're more than happy to meet with your team um, to help out with any key messaging that you might need help with. All right, so I think, does Kathy bake? I'm not sure, do you? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. I know she cooks a little. <laughs> Um, all right. So yes. And thank you, Katie. If you need an expert for communications and outreach, let us know if you haven't met with an expert yet, contact your advisor. We can set you up um, with an expert on our team or um, someone that we know through Grades of Green. We're happy to help with that as well. All right. I think that's it. So thank you again to all the amazing leaders of our teams. We appreciate you. Um, you are the motivation to these students. So we really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying with Grace Green. We're, we're grateful for all of you. Um, and thank you for joining, for joining us and for all your teams and what they're doing to take climate action. We're so excited to see the product, projects come to fruition and just watch their leadership development. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.